I've been playing Mario Party ever since I was a little boy, and a huge reason for this are the boards you play on. So I'm going to talk about my favorite boards from Mario Party. So, uh, here we go. While Ouija Island would be best described as one giant ship post, for one, the idea of giving Waluigi his own level is pretty dope, since Waluigi doesn't really have anything besides being the final boss in the DDR Mario game. Also, in the story mode, the cutscene before playing on the board, Waluigi is shown beating the shit out of Bowser, so that's pretty funny. Now, getting onto the board itself, I like the big circle in the top left, since every turn it switches what type of space it is. So you might have Game Guy one turn, and then just red spaces in another turn. Another thing I like about this map is the big bomb space space in the middle, since it creates tension for anyone who's inside the circle, since not only do they get sent back to start, but they also lose all their coins, and since there are skeleton key doors before this bomb circle, you can delay your return and this has some sort of strategy to it. Lastly, I like how the map implies that this was once Luigi's Island, but then Waluigi took it over and stamped his upside down L and face around the whole map. Now jumping over to Mario Party 4 with Goomba's Greedy Gala. The thing I like about this board the most is the giant roulette wheel located in the middle of the map. This will be your main form of transportation to the other quadrants. I really like the idea that you can bribe the Goomba running the wheel in the middle to make the odds more in your favor to put you in a quadrant that the star is located in, since depending on where the ball lands is where you are going to be grabbed and moved towards. I also like the little slot machine minigame in the top right quadrant, and I only wish that were, there were more casino-like minigames. Skipping five and going straight to Mario Party 6, we have another gambling theme course, that being Fair Square. To begin with, this board allows you to have some crazy scores. The reason for this comes down to the day and night cycle. In the day, the stars are always 20 coins, but at the beginning of the night cycle, the amount for a star can be anywhere from 5 coins to 40 coins. This creates a risk versus reward system, since you can choose to buy the star at day and know you that you are always buying a star for 20 coins, or you can risk it and keep your cash and bank that the price for a star drops lower than what it was in the daytime. You can also buy up to five stars at a time, which like I said, causes some crazy games to happen. I also like all the different side events going on in the board. Starting from left to right, you have a slot machine, which at night, all that happens is that the rewards go up, but the wheel spins faster. This allows you to make easy money before grabbing the star. Next up are the four pipes, which in the day cycle, everyone gives up 10 coins, but in the night cycle, everyone gives up one star. Once everyone gives what they can to the pot, everyone takes turns picking which pipe will have the tallest plant, and whoever wins gets the whole pot. This allows for some crazy comebacks as someone can just get four stars just by winning this one simple minigame. The last part is the hat game, where you can give up one star and play a hat shuffling game. At daytime there are three hats, and at night there are six. If you win the day game, you get two stars, while if you win the night game, you get three stars. I've never seen anyone win the night game though, so good luck with that. Going from one of the highest scoring boards to one of the lowest scoring boards, we have Castaway Bay. To start with, I once again love the gimmick of this board, taking the idea from a classic Mario Party board, that being Mario's Rainbow Castle, the gimmick, for those who don't know, is that every time that you reach the end of the path, either two things happen. One, you can purchase a star from DK, or you will be given a czar from Bowser. So this map becomes a race to DK and then becomes an anti-speedrun to Bowser's ship. I also enjoy the bells you ring, more specifically the one before the end of the path, since at least once per game, either someone gets completely screwed by this and gets bowser the next turn, or gets blessed and gets DK last second. Honestly, out of all the boards where the main way of getting stars is by stealing them, Snowflake Lake is probably my favorite. For one, the board has the rabbits from Bomberman Generations, which is raw, and I prefer the snow setting over Egypt and space. To be honest though, all these take star maps have a good balance between offense and defense, since the main way of stealing stars can be used for what it was intended to be used for, which is stealing stars, or it can be used for a quick escape option. I also enjoy the middle area, since it is the only safe zone on the board, and you lose access to it once the night cycle has begun. Hopping over to the next GameCube Mario Party game, we have Neon Heights. I enjoy the chest mechanic for this board, which is, there are three chests. One chest contains a star, one chest 
chest contains 20 coins, and the last chest contains a bomb. This causes three different races, and the mystery of opening a chest becomes pretty hype, since you don't know what it's gonna be. There are even more hype moments when the Bowser event starts. If you don't know, in Mario Party 7, there is a meter, and when it reaches full, Bowser does something to affect the board. For Neon Heights, the chest with the bomb gets changed to a Dark Star instead, so this creates a risk to opening chests since you might just cost yourself a star. Lastly, I enjoyed the different minigames you play, which are the baseball minigame and the western minigame. For the last board, I want to talk about Koopa's Tycoon Town, which is Mario Party 8's version of Windmillville from Mario Party 7. However, this takes place in a city and not in the boring Netherlands. To start, stars are earned by investing in hotels, so I guess it is time to unlock your inner Monopoly man. Some small things I like about the map are how hotels, if you reach a certain point, will increase and decrease in star amount. I also like the cars that DK and Bowser drive, no cap. They do be kind of driving over the speed limit though. I also like how if you reach the max amount of money you can invest in a hotel, the hotel is not 100% dead, since you can still use bandits to steal money from hotels. Lastly, Hold On To Your Grandmas is on a whole nother level of big brain sentences. Well, that's all I have for today, so uh, peace everyone.